Nearly two and a half thousand square miles of Florida's southern tip are the mangroves of the Everglades, the largest subtropical wilderness of the United States, the home to huge amounts of wildlife, some great hunting and, today, fabulous fishing. We are in a small boat casting live bait for sea fish, including shark, ray and the greatest prize, snook. And the first fish hits not long into the trip. It should probably be a black tip, I would guess. I haven't got a good look at him, so, but I'm going to say he's probably a black tip shark. Chris has been a boat captain for years in these waters. He says it's all about the casting. To put the bait in the right place up against the shoreline where the fish are is not as easy as he makes it look. So when you do it, you're going to take your finger, clip it back to that cork, flip this over here. So you got to See how that bale's nice and open? You're gonna take always take your off hand down here on the bottom. I have two hands always on the rod. When you come through, it's just a nice little whip in the in the wrist. Then when you do that, you're just gonna let it sit in there, pull it nice and tight, make sure your bale's closed, and you're ready to catch a fish. You want it pretty close to the shore, yeah? That... Yeah, we're gonna be as close to the shore as you possibly can. Let that live bait do work in there. Um, so what he's gonna do is you're just gonna get him up there, let him get in there, and these fish are gonna go up and down these shorelines. And uh, what you want to do is be as close as possible. Let that, let that bait spend as much time as you can as close to the trees as possible for them to eat it. There's a food source up there. There's, um, you know, you have your rock and your oysters um, and shells and things like that. What happens is in the, the roots of the trees, the crabs and the crustaceans will get into. And what they do is they, they, they get in there and when we, our tides fluctuate back up and down, it'll flush all those dead nutrients out. And that's what these fish then are start looking in the current. They're looking for all those nutrients to come to them and, and, to, uh, and to, to feed on them. We're using live bait, which is effective. Again, there's a skill to fishing it properly. Hook them through there. They're gonna wiggle on you. You get a bunch of slack in your line, the chances are that that bait's swam out to you. Um, so what you're gonna do is just leave it up there, let that bait do its thing. If you feel a nice big thump, you're gonna start reeling, lift that rod tip up, and just keep... Gonna have a fish right here. He chased it. But yeah, all you're gonna do is just do that, let it sit in there, and let them do its thing. This is shallow water angling. The fish are cruising around close to the surface. How deep is the water? Right here, we're pretty shallow. We're about three, two and a half to three foot deep. And, um, and how far out does that depth go? Uh, it goes a good ways. I mean, you can you go out there. So you see these white poles that are marking this this shallow shoal here. This is all put in by the park service to to mark that it's it's unpassable for a lot of boats. Um, but luckily enough for us, we you know we don't draft that much water. And you'll get fish cruising around all of this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like all these dead woods, all the dead logs and trees for the big shark. Yeah. Stingray? They look like ray. Yep, probably a stingray. But yeah, all these dead woods, all these rock bars and things like that always hold redfish, snook, sea trout, things like that. Good one, buddy. Up your lines, guys. Up your Real lines. Run. That might be a big red. Uh, he's running like it. Nice and easy. If he wants to pull, let him pull. Yep, he ain't going anywhere. Step down from there. Yep. Step, down, step, down, step down, step down, step down. Step down, dad, step down. Don't, do not, do not tighten that drag or nothing. Don't tighten the drag. Nowhere for him to go out. Don't hold it, don't palm it or nothing. Just let him run. Put some pressure on him. Keep the rod tip up nice and high. Real when you can. This is a nice one. Yep, just nice and easy. Mm-hmm. It's a ray. Oh, it's a stingray? Yeah. Oh, my God. Ah, must be the one I saw earlier, yeah? Well, that's unique. Steve Irwin killer right there. That's going to say. <laughs> well done. Oh, that was good fun. Good one, Mr. Irwin. Yeah, not, one for the, uh, not one for the pot, but still, uh, you know, lots of great fun. Love uh, it. Is, is that usual? Do you, would you catch that here normally? Yeah, we catch them all the time. Yeah. I've never caught a ray though, so that was exciting for me. That was great. Will they sting you? Yeah, they have a barb on their tail. So like if he were walking in the water and you stepped on it, what he would do is take that tail and, and <laughs> it's got a barb on it. He would hit you with that tail. Like a you gotta watch behind you when you're casting, buddy. It's not just us fishing out here. The sport's a big draw locally. It's a challenge and no fish is guaranteed until it's in or alongside the boat. Real, real, real. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Don't nice and easy. Our live bait looks like an easy meal for the birds, but they seem to know there's something wrong. Then we get into the fish we came for. First, a small one.
then a respectable size. Well, that's about fun. Marco Island snook. Common snook. If you find yourself in the Naples area of the Gulf of Mexico and you want a fishing trip with a side order of wildlife watching, look up Clean Sweep Charters. <laughs>